Hey guys, my name is AJ with Dirtcom, and today we're going to show you how to get from this to this. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to go over the unboxing and installing of the trail swing on your rig. If you've already done that and you're tuned in on YouTube, check out the chapters below because we're going to show you each accessory being installed on the trail swing, including the trail bracket that mounts the Rotopax gas cans on the side, the front runner drop down table, the accessory hitch, and any other detail you want to know. You need very simple tools to get this trail swing installed on your vehicle. First one, you need a 19 millimeter socket wrench for your lug nuts. And you actually need two of them to get to the one on the back side. So you want two 19 millimeters. You want a four millimeter or a 5 30 seconds Allen head, a 10 millimeter wrench, and a Phillips head screwdriver. To tighten up the wedge on the back of the trail swing, you'll need a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 ratchet. All right, so after you cut the tape open and pop the staples off, this is what you'll find in the box. This will swing right over. You don't have to rip these staples off. That keeps the trail swing from rocking around when it's being shipped. Move that foam over and you'll find a few boxes on the top. If you ordered accessories, all your accessories will be included in this box. But for now, we'll just put them aside. So when you have removed all the boxes for the accessories, this square box is the one that you're going to want to keep. This box has all the necessary hardware and everything you need to install the trail swing on your rig. Let's get started. Before you pull your trail swing out of the box, you might want to ask for some help. If you're doing it by yourself, I like to grab one of these blocks, set it on the ground, and you'll see why in a second it'll keep the trail swing from falling over. So I set that down there. Good form on your back. There you go. So you'll see this block of wood. If I need to set it down, walk away for a moment, it'll be secure and it won't fall over and I don't have to worry about it. Now, before we go and put this in your tow hitch, you wanna take this protective piece off of the wedge system and get rid of that. You wanna make sure that this wedge system is below this top surface. So what I like to do is I like to loosen this a little bit with my 22 millimeter or 7 8 tool. That way this gives it more space to sit lower than this surface here. I usually have it just enough to where it won't fall off. Now I can slide that into my tow hitch. Many of the anti-wobble systems out there right now use this very similar system. You have to get a long extension and tighten the bolt from the front to bring this wedge upward. The problem with that is you have to put the hitch pin last. And as, as you tighten this up, this entire system actually moves. And that is the very reason why these holes are so large. You can see there's a lot of play in there. So if you're towing, that's gonna be moving back and forth and clunking and making a lot of noise. On top of that, in order to tighten this, you have to use an, an extremely long extension just to get to the bolt head inside. The other issue with that is, as you're tightening this, you have a lot of forces that are just torquing on this extension, and you'll never get it as tight as you need it. With our system, all you need is one wrench, and you can tighten it up easy and quick. You're strong as an ox, go! Come on, you can do it! <laughs> Once you got that slid into your tow hitch, you're gonna to wanna to line up the holes so you can slide a standard 5 8 hitch pin into your tow system. You can use a standard 5 8 or a locking hitch pin. I like to use a locking hitch pin to help protect my investment and it just gives me peace of mind. Our holes are precision holes, so it's a little tight of a fit, but that's perfect for towing. So you, gotta, you might have to shake it back and forth a little bit to get this in there. There you go. And lock this up. As soon as the hitch pin is slid into the hole, now you're gonna grab your 7 8 or 22 millimeter ratchet or socket wrench and you're gonna tighten up the wedge system. Now, if you don't have a helper, you're gonna to wanna to pull back on this as you tighten so the whole weight of the trail swing isn't on the nut. It'll make your life a little easier. As 
So you might get to a point where you think it's tight, but you have to check. If you go over here and you see this wiggling, it's actually not tight. So give it a little bit of a wiggle, go back down and tighten it some more. So you can see now, it's not wobbling and it's moving the entire car. Just from experience, I can probably tighten it a little more. Once we have that tightened, we can tear this off. And let's see what's inside of that small box that we pulled out. out. All right guys, every trail swing comes with all the hardware you need in this box. So let's pop her open and I'll show you what's inside. So inside this box, you're gonna find another box. And most importantly, the mount to your tire. Here she is right here. This tire mount has a M12 stud and these four are what connect it to your trail swing. So inside of this small box, what you'll find is your Rotopack spacer. This fits all Rotopack's patterns and it acts as a spacer for your trail swing. Wrapped in here, you'll see the uh, height adjustable bolt-on resting pad. So this is what helps hold the weight of the trail swing while it's closed. The key for your wheel locks. And you'll notice we provide three spline lug nuts for your convenience so you don't have to run down to the hardware store and look for some yourself. You'll also find four button head bolts, four nuts, and eight washers for your license plate. And three long screws and nuts for your license plate bracket. Now you're probably wondering, where's my license plate bracket? Well, if you bought the trail bracket as an accessory, we probably put it in that same box. Let me show you. You'll notice that our extremely robust license plate bracket already comes with a light. We'll get to this later. Check it out. You probably already noticed, there's also a bottle opener. This stainless steel safety pin will keep your trail swing locked and safely in place, even if this happens to pop open on the trail. So you can see this is completely loose. This is still not going anywhere. So if we close this, pop that out, trail swing opens. It's always pin first, open, pull, and now you're clear. So it's always pin first, I drop it closest to me, open, pull, and close. That way you know this won't accidentally latch when you swing it open as so. When you go to close this, you want to make sure this is open in that position. Swing it back and this lanyard will actually help push that U-bolt into the latch and see how it just locked. If that doesn't happen for you, if it happens to be over here and it's not latching, that's fine too. Sometimes it works. If you need a, you, sometimes you might need to help it with your thumb and just do something like that. One other tip. This auto latch right here, you can see when it latches in, on some points it'll be really tight. If you find the middle of it, you'll see that it's loose. You don't actually have to physically push out on it to lift it up. It's on a cam system, so if you just pull it up with your finger, just like so, it's in the free swing position. So let me show you that again. You just bring it up with your finger, and it's in the free swing position. Check it out. First thing that we recommend installing, is this resting pad. You need a 10 millimeter wrench and a four millimeter or a 530 seconds Allen head. So as you can see here, these two slotted holes is where you bolt on the resting pad bracket and it's height adjustable. So you're gonna get one button head bolt and one washer on this side right here. Slide that into the hole Backside, you're going to put one washer and one nut, and you're going to repeat that for the other side.
soon as you have those finger tight, you can get your Allen wrench and your 10 millimeter wrench on the other side and you can snug it up. You're not gonna wanna do it completely tight for this first go around because you're gonna wanna adjust it to the height of the trail swing arm. So as you can see, I have it a little bit loose still so I can kinda hit it upwards and downwards. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna close this and we're gonna see where it rests on the bottom of the arm. I usually like to lift it up with my hands right here just kind of give it a lift. If you don't have it fully tight, you should be able to move it. From that point, I'll carefully open this back up and I'll completely tighten it down. Now the resting pad bracket installation is complete. Next, we're gonna put the license plate bracket on. For the install on the license plate bracket, you're gonna need these three long Phillips head bolts with the 10 millimeter nuts on the end. So let's grab the proper tools. Phillips head screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench. You can see on the back of this license plate, these are slotted holes to allow you to adjust the license plate depending on which vehicle you have. For a Toyota Tacoma or any vehicle with a tailgate that folds down, you're gonna adjust it all the way over. For most vehicles, you can center this or keep it close to the hinge. Easiest way to do this, slide these into here and get your license plate on. It's gonna hold it up for you. Don't completely let go or your license plate might fall off and you're gonna scratch it. So keep your hands close, get all the bolts in. I usually do the washer first. And then I put the nut in after. And as soon as I know it's finger tight, I can relax a little bit and let it hang. As you can see, you can slide this back and forth. If you have a tailgate, you wanna make sure that you clear the tailgate before you tighten this down. And you wanna make sure your hatch clears as well. I'm gonna open it to the third position here. You don't really want to go past it or you're gonna scratch this up. So let's get to that position. Right there. So this is where you wanna adjust your license plate bracket. Make sure it clears your hatch. I'm pretty comfortable with putting mine really close because I've used this a lot of times. So I'm gonna get it really close. And I think I'm comfortable in that position. So I'm gonna get my Phillips head and my 10 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna tighten up. Now I know my license plate is secure and it won't hit when I have it on that position. After this license plate is now secured, we can get the tire mount on here. We'll show you how to put the tire mount on by itself and also with the trail bracket. Before you put your tire mount on, if you have a trail bracket that you bought with the trail swing, you're gonna wanna put that on with your tire mount. So here's your five lug and six lug tire mount. As you can see, we put these bolts back here just so it's straightforward to you about where they go you're gonna to wanna to take them back out. Now, when I'm installing this, I usually like to keep it closed just so it's in a secure position that doesn't move. It's just really helpful in case you gotta pull on something that it's not gonna move around on you. As far as positioning goes, you can see you can mount this tire at different heights. Our recommendation, if you have a 29 inch tire, is to go second from the top. Smaller vehicles like Subarus are gonna like this position. If you have a 31 or larger, you might wanna to go to the top position. And as you can see, the, this corner sits under this rail, so you can't do it straight on. You gotta kinda of slide it up. Because I'm running a 35 inch tire, I'm putting this at the highest position 
so it doesn't interfere with the tow hitch and the handle latch over here. So I put these in just to show you exactly the positioning, but it's easier to do this one at a time. Especially if you have it on the top setting, you're gonna want this flush first and then you're gonna tighten it down. So let's get this top corner. Get it almost finger snug there. Give yourself some wiggle room to get all four in. Once I have those top two, I know I can let go safely and I can get the bottom two on. There's a little bit of wiggle room here, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's straight before you cinch it down. Now, another piece of advice, when you go and do the final tightening on this, don't do it from here and down, because you're putting a lot of pressure on your swing. It's better if you're going, or if, it's better if you're doing it in a sideways motion like this. You see that? If I do it this way, you're gonna see the whole thing's gonna wiggle around. It's gonna be a little bit harder to do. So I like to do it either like that, or if you wanna do a pushing motion, you could do it that, this way too. You're gonna want this at 65 foot pounds. Check it out. All right, our most common accessory is the trail bracket. This is what mounts your roto packs on the side of the tire. Looks really cool and it's very useful. Let's get this box open. You'll see that your trail bracket is wrapped in paper and foam. So this is the standard trail bracket. We also have a trail bracket HD, which is a little bit heavier and a lot thicker steel. This is meant to mount one roto packs on the side or one on the side and one on the back. If you mount one on the back, you'll be using this roto pack spacer that you got with the trail swing to mount right on the back of this. It'll clear the flanges there and it'll get you a nice flush mount. One very important piece of advice to make your installation easy and smooth on this, the tolerances on these holes we made really tight for these bolts right here. These are the same bolts that are on the back of your tire mount. You're gonna be using those ones. But my piece of advice you want to put these bolts in these slots before you put your tire mount on. So as you can see, these are slide, sliding nice and loose in these slots. That's why we like to put them in first. And the nice thing is now, so when you line them up and put it in, it's a lot easier. So now that we got this in here, the other thing you need to do is adjust for the size of your tire. If you have a tape measure in your hand from the center of here, if you have a 35 inch tire, half of a 35 inch tire is 17. So I'm gonna be able to pull this in a little bit. Like so. I like where that sits. It's also helpful if you have a piece of tape, maybe put it here so you kind of know, okay, I don't, if it moves while you're trying to tie it, you kind of have a rough reference point of where you want it to be. So let's get this tire mount on. You can see it's really tight right now because it's resting if you have a friend, they can help lift up the bracket, or I sometimes I just bring my arm underneath, so now it's a lot looser, it'll be easier to thread these in. Just take your time, make sure they're all finger tight. I know for sure that they're all in there now, so I know I can tighten down on them. Get it right before it's tight so you can still adjust it because if you tighten it while this is sagging, you're gonna notice your rotopax is gonna be hanging a little bit crooked, it won't be vertical. I like to actually go over vertical and I like to lift it up before I bolt it down. All right, there we go. Trail bracket installed. Here at Dirtcom, as you can see from the trail swing, we love great design. That's why we chose Front Runner for our drop down table. As an authorized retailer for Front Runner, we love to be able to offer you the best products on the market. 
to pair with your trail swing. If you bought your table and the table brackets from Dirtcom, you'll see that we put a Dirtcom piece of tape here to signify that your table brackets are actually inside of this box. So let's pop this open and show you what's inside. You'll see the front runner bag is all the front runner hardware. We won't be needing that for this, so let's set it aside, maybe save it for a rainy day. Front runner instructions, we can set this aside as well. This is the bag that you're gonna need and all the hardware you need to put the front runner table on your trail swing. You'll see that this front runner table also comes with this extra support bracket. We're also gonna use this because it adds a lot of rigidity to the bottom of the table. So we're gonna set this right here so we can use it. Set the hardware aside. Let me show you what our table brackets look like. We box this conveniently in the front runner table for you. And here they are. This is what's gonna mount the front runner table to the trail swing. Let's set these aside for now. Show you how to install those. But really quickly, let me show you why we chose the front runner table. This table fits a lot of vehicles, fits tailgates of Jeeps. The reason we like it is it's nice and secured with this latch and best of all, it has a slide out cutting board. We think that's awesome because it's basically doubling the space on your table. And they're one of the original guys who designed this style of table. We really love it. First thing we want to do, identify the top and bottom brackets. The top bracket is the one that has this on the side and on the top. The bottom bracket is the more simple straight across one. So when you find the top bracket, what you're going to want to do is install it on the front runner table. And let me show you exactly where we need to put those. Along the side here, you're going to see one, two, three, four holes. This top bracket is going to line up with these holes right here. The bottom bracket will line up with these bottom holes here. Let me set those down and let me show you the hardware that comes in the bag. So we've got four sets of carriage bolts here. They go right in the center of these. Four bolts that bolt onto the sides of the bracket, same button heads that we're using on the trail swing, and this very important bolt that goes on the trail bracket, we highly recommend using this on your trail bracket with the front runner table. So, let's get this top bracket on the table, and I'm gonna get the bunt head side on the inside of the table here. So once again, you wanna get this bunt head on the inside, and you're gonna get the nut and the washer on the other side. As you can see here, you're gonna screw this on. You can set this down now that's screwed on. You can see it's on the top slotted hole up there. That'll give you some adjustment on your table. Get this one on this side. We're gonna get our same four millimeter Allen wrench that we've been using for the trail swing and the 10 millimeter. I'm going to tighten this just enough so I know it's not going to fall off, but I want to keep it really loose and you'll see why in a second. Now with that, you've probably already guessed that these square holes are for these carriage bolts. That way you don't need to grab the other side with a wrench as you're putting it into the trail swing. Now you might want to have a friend help you with this. I've done this a few times myself just because I've had a lot of practice at it, but you're going to put these holes through the trail swing and I'll show you that right now. So there's, there's two methods of mounting the front runner table onto the trail swing. Method one, if you have your tire mount all the way to the top, you're gonna be using these, these set of holes. You're gonna skip these and you're gonna use these set of holes. So you're using these two and these two. That's one, two, three, fourth one up on this side. So that top bracket that we just put on is gonna go through those two holes. And um, I'll show you how that's done. Now that we have the carriage bolts in here and the brackets on here, before we put this on the trail swing, we want to put this bracket on the trail swing as well. So we're going to put the carriage bolts in. We're going to get two flat washers, fender washers, and two nuts. 
And if you see right here, that top bracket we just put on the front rudder table is gonna go right below this trail bracket. You're gonna skip a hole and put this one right here. Now, the reason why we put this one first is you wanna make sure these carriage bolts can't fall out. You're gonna tighten this as much as you can with your fingers. So it's still gonna be loose, but as long as these don't fall out, you'll be fine. The reason for that <clears throat> is when we sandwich this in between, it's almost impossible to access those carriage bolts. So you really want them cinched down before you put this on. Now we can get the table on, same, two washers, two bolts. It's gonna be really helpful if you have somebody to help you. I'm gonna get it done for you guys, just to show you that it is possible, but not recommended. Bring a friend. So as you can see, these two whole bolts will go in that hole. So I'm gonna get it in place. Trail swing is locked, so it's not moving. I'm gonna use my leg here, gonna hold this up. And again, this isn't, it's a lot easier if you have somebody helping you. Once I have those finger tight, now I know I can take a little bit of a breather and let it hang. Make sure to not just let it drop because it's not tight and it's not cinched down fully. We got these two button heads left and these washers and nuts. This bottom bracket, as seen from the front runner directions, is oriented in this way. This is the position that you want this in. We're gonna slide this in between our bracket and the front runner table bracket. And you're gonna line it up with these two top holes here and this slotted hole. There it is. Same button head screws, we're gonna put it from the front just like we did on the top bracket. And I'm gonna tighten it with a nut and a washer on this back side here. Get it finger tight. Now we're gonna to go to the other side do the same exact thing. The reason why we don't tie any of those down is we want it really loose. Try to line everything up. You can see right here, I can move this back and forth relatively easily. And I can find our hole from our bracket right there. There you go. One nut, one washer on the other side. Tightening it as much as I can with my finger. Now, remember that important bolt I told you about? We're gonna put that on right now. Here's that bolt. This bolt will go through the top hole of these holes on this trail bracket. So as you can see, since it's loose right now, we can adjust it and move it very freely and get the nut and the bolt on the other side. So we got one there, we got one there. And as you can see, just hand tightening that on there, the table is already a lot more rigid. See that? Now we can grab our necessary tools and tighten it all up. For the front runner drop down table install, you'll need the following tools. You're gonna need a four millimeter or five thirty seconds Allen head, same one we've been using. 10 millimeter wrench, same one we've been using. A 13 millimeter for the carriage bolts. And for the one bolt that goes through the trail bracket, you're gonna need either a 7 16 or an 11 millimeter. Whichever it is, the one that you have, you're gonna need two of them. So the first thing we're gonna tighten down, we're gonna grab the 13 millimeter, tighten down the carriage bolt nuts, the ones right behind here. So as I do this, I'm actually gonna tilt up on the table before I cinch them down. We're gonna grab our 10 millimeter and our four millimeter Allen wrench. 
We're going to tighten down all four of these on each side of the table. Once again, we're going to try to tilt it up a little bit before we cinch it down. So you can see I got this here. I got the 10 millimeter on the back. Last bolt we're going to tighten. It's at 7 16 or 11 millimeter. You're going to need two of them, like I said before. Let's swap this out. One on the front, one on the back. And now your table is ready to use. You're going to notice that it is slightly tilted upward in this orientation. We engineered it that way because as soon as you put a tire on here, any amount of weight, it's going to bend down and level out. This is one method of mounting this table. We engineered multiple ways to mount this table. This method specifically works if you have the tire mount on the top or a second setting. If you have a 33 to 35 inch tire, it works perfectly for Forerunners and Tacomas. However, if you have a Subaru, your car is going to be a lot lower to the ground. With this mounting setup, your table is probably going to be down here. That's not ideal. Don't worry. We have a mounting solution for you with the same exact brackets and hardware, and I'll show you right now. Check it out. All right, guys, so if you have a Subaru or a smaller CUV, your tire mount is second from the top and your trail bracket is pushed all the way over, you're gonna to wanna to mount your front runner table a little higher and in this method. So you'll see, in the first method, we had this bracket in this orientation where the flange is facing up. For this method, we're gonna flip this upside down and mount it on these two top empty holes. However, you'll notice if we use the center of this bracket, this is keeping it from being level. We're going to move this all the way over to the last setting here to allow this to be straight and the flange to clear this bracket. That means we're also going to move this over as well. So we'll do that first. All right, here we go. So we got this moved all the way over in the proper orientation. Basically, you're going toward the trail swing. Now we're going to get this top bracket prepared on the front runner table. Let's come over here and check it out. So. Again, we're using it in this orientation and we're actually using the same holes that we used in the previous installation, which is gonna be these bottom ones and these top ones, skipping that middle hole. Two carriage bolts. Remember, they're not going in the center anymore. They're actually going off to the side. Whether you put the carriage bolts in first or after you cinch it down, you can stretch this out and it'll still slide in. Now we can swing this over to the trail swing. Before I do that, remember from the first method, we gotta make sure these are cinched down so they can't fall out of the slot, but still loose enough to move around. Put these in the proper hole, proper position. Once again, washer and nut. I'm going to tighten these up just a little bit. That way they don't accidentally slide off while we're uh, tightening everything else on. Keep in mind, they're still pretty loose. Flange facing away from the table. I'm going to slide that in right between this bracket. Once again, the front runner bracket slides in between the table and the trail swing bracket. And now we can line up the holes. I'm gonna get, grab a button head with a washer and a nut. So again, this bracket lined up with the hole. And if you look on the back side here, you'll see we're using the same slotted hole as we did in the first one. Just like that. The other button head is gonna go on this side as well. We're going to line that up. This one's going to be a little bit trickier, but you can see daylight right there. Now I know we had set this bolt in here. This is temporary. That was just to get the table hanging for us. So I'm going to take this back out. Careful because the table will actually droop as soon as you pull this bracket off. So is this table lowers 
what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this nut to the bottom right here and line it up with that hole. So we're going to do the bottom bracket first. The reason we move this bolt to this area, remember that important bolt that I was telling you about in the first section or in the first method? We're going to use that. It's going to go through the table, our bracket, and the trail bracket. So I'll repeat that again. Table, table bracket, and the trail bracket. It's going to go through all three, and it's going to give you a nice solid foundation to mount this table onto. I'm going to get my 11 millimeter or 7 16 ready. So this bolt head is big enough. We're not going to use a washer like we did on this button head because we need the length. And we're going to get that through both of these brackets here. And it's going to be a little bit difficult, but you can get it if you just push it through. There you go. I'm just going to get the nut on here first. Kind of kind of hold it in place for us. There you go. From there, we can tighten the rest of the brackets. We'll tighten this last. We're going to tighten the carriage bolts with a 13 millimeter. Make sure those are nice and cinched down. See, as you can see, I'm doing that. It's pushing the table closer and it's going to help us tighten this last bolt. We have these two on the bottom. These two right here, you can't see them. They're behind that bracket. If you remember, that's why we cinch them down before we put the table on. 10 mil and our four millimeter Allen wrench. We can tighten this down. Let's swap that over. Make sure that's nice and tight. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to tighten this down to get the bolt all the way through. You can see it's bringing the table in. That's where we need it. And it should be good. So now we have this all tightened down and ready to go. This is exactly how you'd want it if you have a lower vehicle like a Subaru or any other CUV and you have your tire mount from the second to top setting. So let's close this up and let's show you how to put on the accessory hitch. Check it out. Hey guys, so now that we saw how the table goes on, let's check out the accessory hitch. The accessory hitch bolts onto the swing arm of the trail swing. That way if you have a bike rack, cargo rack, you can swing it out of the way. And you'll see that in the box, got some packaging foam and you got the accessory hitch. So this is how the accessory hitch comes. This is how it bolts to your trail swing. These are set screws that keep whatever you put in here from wobbling. And you'll see in here, this is all the hardware that you're gonna need. Tucked right in there. Let me show you what tools you need first. You're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket or wrench and an 18 millimeter socket or wrench. You have four nuts, four bolts, and four washers. The washers are only gonna go on the nut side. You're just putting all four bolts in here. And nuts in the washer on the other side of the trail swing. These are metal lock nuts. So as soon as you use these, these are really hard to take on and off, which is helpful from vibration and from accidentally coming loose. So let's get this on the trail swing, see how it looks. Oh, what happened? It's a right hand version. So the other one, the left hand, it was a customer's. They were nice enough to let us demo it. They didn't need an accessory hitch, so we decided just to get another one on here to show you how it fits. So as you can see, the angle of this hitch lines up perfectly with the main bracket here on this trail swing. So you can see right here, when you tighten it up, It'll line up perfectly. Four washers on the back, one on each bolt, and the metal lock nuts go right on. 
everything we've done in this video so far, you'll notice we didn't have the tire on. It's a lot easier when the tire is not on the vehicle yet. That's the last thing that you really want to put on. Can you imagine if the tire was here? This would be a little bit more cumbersome. So before I tighten it all, all the way down, you're, you're gonna see that this is sagging this way. You wanna bring it upward. So you see this play? It's better to bring this up before you cinch it all the way down. So that's what we're gonna do here. All right, now that we got everything tightened down, you can see if you had a bike rack on this, these set screws would tighten down on it, keep it from rattling around, and um, you're all set. One other piece that we have that does go on here is the extension hitch, and let me show you what that looks like. We designed it specifically to fit into this hitch. It fits other standard receivers as well. You slide that in there, Hitch pin through here, tighten these down, and now this won't rattle at all. And whatever you put in here, you can also tighten down and it also won't rattle. And the reason it's this length with multiple holes is your tire, when you have it mounted, is gonna be sticking out to here. So if you have this, you can have your bike rack here, you can still fold it up and clear whatever tire you have on here. Check it out. Let's go over some of the features of these trail swings. So you can see here, I have this Rotopax mounted to the side. You saw us put that accessory bracket on earlier. You can see the table that I have on here. Front runner makes a really nice table. And license plate with the light. Common question we have, how do I wire this license plate light, this LED into my vehicle? Well, the simplest way to do this four pin trailer side tow harness. Remember that, four pin trailer side. So if you grab one of these, you can grab them from your local hardware store. Uh, we might already have them in our store by the time you're uh, watching this, but you can get these from Amazon at any desired length. And this is the best plug and play solution because most vehicles, especially modern vehicles, will have a four pin and a seven pin. So you can plug this into your four pin and connect your lights to this wire. It's gonna be the uh, white and brown wire you'll see here. And that connects right to this. Let me show you the additional grommet we put in this system right over here. This is where you would be running your wiring, nice rubber grommet behind here so you don't see it. And one tip, before you wire the plate, you're going to want this at the full 180, the last hole position, because this is the furthest away this will be from that grommet. So when you do wire it in, you're going to want to have enough slack to get your license plate. As you can see, plenty of features on here. Main thing about this trail swing, fully rebuildable. We designed it so these bushings in here, when they wear out, the replaceable, greasable Zerk fitting. This stainless plate, that's also a bolt-on. You can actually pop that out and replace it. Main reason we did that is we noticed when we're really seriously rock crawling or something's happening, this is the first thing you'll scrape and maybe you wanna replace it. Rather than having to replace your whole unit, you just replace that. All these rubber bushings are all replaceable. Resting pad, height adjustable, replaceable. That's why we're very confident to offer a limited lifetime warranty and to offer a transferable warranty. So if you go and sell this unit because you changed vehicles, you changed your mind, or you just changed platforms, sell it to the new person as long as they register it with us and let us know that they have it now, warranty transfers to them. For those of you that have already have the trail swing or talked to us in person, you might know this little unique feature, but these mounting holes, not only do they mount standard universal cameras, but they're also 
a secret message hidden inside. This is Morse code. So this is actually Morse code for USA. This is TS for Trail Swing and DC for Dirtcom. We thought that was pretty cool because we're proud of where it's made. So the reason why we call this the Trail Swing and we're confident in calling it the Trail Swing, we thought about departure angle. So not only does the entire arm sit high up on the bumper, but out of the tow hitch, this is angled up so you have a better departure angle. Some of the other versions out there, you can see, will stick straight out, which by definition will ruin your departure angle. On top of our nice departure angle, we have a nice reinforced hitch collar here. As you can see, over time, this helps with longevity. Every single hitch that I've seen on OEM vehicles and aftermarket companies have this reinforcement collar because they know that over time, this will open up and start to crack. And that's why we're confident, since we've tested this through SAE tow rating standards, that we can call this a class three rating. We have our company logo proudly displayed on the stainless plate. Each plate has a unique serial number that identifies your trail swing. That way we know who made it and when it was made. And that's how we're able to offer you a lifetime warranty. All right, guys, so you saw all the accessories and how they go on the trail swing. Last thing to put on is the tire. And you'll see here, it comes with the lug nuts and the hardware you need to mount your tire. Any five lug or six lug wheel will fit onto there. Of course, we give you the key. So this 35 inch tire, or actually it's a 315 17, it's pretty heavy to lift um, with one person. I've gotten used to it, but we really recommend having someone help you. One trick that I've learned to do, if I don't have somebody to help me, what I'll do is I'll actually get an extension hitch right on here, an extension in the hitch. I like to have the icon logo sticking straight up, my valve stem right there. What I'll do is I'll actually set it on here. That way I don't have to really lift it in one shot. And now I can take my time, make sure that's lined up, lift it up. There you go. Now that's nice and on there and put this back where I found it. All right, guys, last but not least, I showed you these earlier. It comes with every trail swing. It also comes with a key. So what I like to do is I actually like to put the top one on first because it kind of centers the tire and lifts it up because of the seated cone area. So if I screw this on, what I'll do is I'll actually lift the tire up with my knee here and with my leg and I'll get it snug. And that's actually lifting the tire now that the cone is lifting it up. So these go on the back and these of course go on the front. So it's helpful if you use a 19 millimeter socket wrench on the back side because some of the wrenches are 19 wrenches are a little too long. So that's what we're going to use for this. And for the front side here, we're going to use a 19 millimeter ratchet wrench. Of course, you can use a normal wrench. So I'm going to put this back through here. So this is what you're going to be using on the back because it kind of fits inside of the wheel. Um, I'll use my hands first to get this started, kind of get a better feel of where the bolt is. And you see right there, you can spin it till it's snug. All right, so now on the other side, same thing. Usually start with my hand to kind of get it in there. Um, be easier from this end, actually. You can see there, I can start tightening it up. Make sure it's snug. And for the purpose of this video, I like to use this because it's just way faster. And of course, the backside. Now we're all set and ready to hit the trails. Hey guys, really appreciate you watching, checking out the install of this trail swing. 
Just remember that chromoly tubing is used in race cars for a reason. We chose inch and a half chromoly tubing because it's strong enough to be compact and lightweight for the small vehicles and CUVs, but still strong enough for 4Runners, Tacomas, and other midsize SUVs out there and 35 inch tires. And with that, I'll see you on the trails. If you're a full-size truck guy and you're in the market for a trail swing, check out the Trail Swing HD. This Trail Swing HD behind me shares the same characteristics and the same function and features as the Trail Swing, just made larger and stronger for your full-size truck. So whether you own a mid-size or full-size truck, the Trail Swing is made for your vehicle. Come check us out at dirtcomusa.com or check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Dirt Complex. Thanks for watching. Be safe on the trails. See you out there. Showed you earlier, it comes with one of these. Also comes with one of, damn it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, let me do that again.